What's happening, my friends? Welcome to my show. Today, we're going to talk about the five things you would tell your 20-year-old self if you were able to jump in a time machine, hit that 88 miles per hour, transport yourself into the past, and then you could pull yourself aside in one of those like time cop scenarios. Yeah. And you'd be like, hey, check it out, these five things. And so, and then you're, you're for some reason, you have to get out of Dodge really, really quickly. So that I guess the singularity doesn't happen. You don't accidentally touch and it bends the space-time continuum and destroys all yeah, life as we know it. Don't make contact just to be safe. The whole point of this though is, is in, in deriving our five things, we're, we're arriving on timeless wisdom. And as I really was forced to choose what I would go on, it was really making me focus on like, man, that's good stuff. I need to really press in to these things even in the present day. So I think uh, I have grown and you're going to grow from this too. This is my show. We got lots to cover, all the normal stuff that you usually get with the show and a uh, title package, right? We do the obligatory title package every time. Roll the obligatory I title package. <coughs> obligatory. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right, welcome back, guys. You weren't gone long. Ben and Heath, I'm going to ask you to give your five today. Have yep. you have you done it? I oh, have yeah. two and a half. That what? is not the homework. You have not done the assigned homework, Ben. Yeah, my bad. My I've, bad. I've got like 18. 18 <laughs> is a lot. You're I, supposed to do five. Well, I just came prepared and also, the, you know, degenerate as a child. Yeah, so you had a lot, had a lot and, of things. Yeah, your 20-year-old self is asking a lot of hard questions. For sure. Guys, tune in. I want you to go ahead and pause. And I want you to put at least two or three in the comments below. You don't get to listen to ours and then improve on them so that you're just a genius mastermind. You got to be honest. So pause the video, put a couple. And if you want to be an overachiever, go ahead and do six, do five at least so that you did better than Ben. <laughs> ben, come on, man. Come on. So Too go ahead and put your comments down below. All right. Before we jump in, let, let's just kind of go round table. I'll do one, then you go All around. Right. Uh, but before we jump in a little, uh, a, a few refrains. So I don't want the yuppie, I wouldn't change a thing, I wouldn't tell myself anything because all my mistakes went into the hot pot of making me who I am. And so you don't want to change a thing. I'm like, man, I think that's crappy philosophy. You could have avoided doing some horrible, horrible stuff and you would be a far better you that you can't really picture. And so imagine you without all the baggage and horrible mistakes and you could still learn without doing the mistake you could learn off the experience of others and so there you go don't take that out i wouldn't change a thing because i'm a bad philosopher also no fear of butterfly effects so you're like wait if i tell myself that then that could set a chain of events and alter how i perceive and what i do and there's no, no fear of that either it's just good wisdom and so don't overthink the butterfly effect kind of thing uh anybody want to start us off we can't stop with start with ben or you're halfway he's gonna run out <laughs> yeah i'm like oh, well, it's, i'm done he'll be done or Keith, uh, start okay. with one of your 25. okay okay it's, it was only 18. uh so here's my first one okay it's it's a two-parter failure is okay mm. and perfectionism is your enemy mm. because i always thought that to fail if you fail then you, you have truly failed yeah. Like, like you, you're not recovering from that. You need to be perfect. You need to get it right. You need to strive for perfectionism. And there were times when I would go on job interviews and I would actually say that my biggest weakness was perfectionism, but it was one of those winks like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just too, but, it, <laughs> but it, I care really, too much. Yeah, sorry. I, I work really. too hard. <laughs> but, but what I found that perfectionism does, it keeps you from finishing projects Yeah. because you're afraid it's not going to be perfect. Very good. And in saying, uh, failure's okay. That means failure is part of the process keep going at it. Yep. yep. It's, you're going to learn, you're going to get better. So I find okay, if I'm not trying hard enough, then I never fail. So okay. if I try hard enough, I will. Yours was far more sage-ish. Mine was invest in Bitcoin. It's going to hit 65,000 <laughs> in 2021. <laughs> okay. I was on a different, Sorry, a different plane. He's a proud plane. I would totally become a billionaire with that idea yeah, right that's a, there. Yeah. So Bitcoin's going to hit 65K in 2021, <laughs> April, if I'm allowed to share the month. There so, is, Okay, so that, you went back to the future Biff style, where he got the book yeah. and he met on the sports well, Okay, yeah. yeah, why wouldn't you do that? I, got, no, like, I, I didn't know that is in the rules. This one is a silly one, uh, but really, I think it's a good one. Hey, invest, even real small amounts, because, uh, you know, 20 years old, you're pretty darn broke. 
but hey, just do a little bit and then don't touch it and just do mutual funds and stick with the market, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, hey, here's NASDAQ, here's Dow, here, here's S&P of just find an index fund, let it camp out there, add slowly over time, and don't worry about hitting anything out of the park and you'll retire multimillionaire. Sure. So uh, I think, hey, invest, invest, invest. And I knew it, but I think it would have taken me coming from the future and being like, do it, kid. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, as a kid, you've always got time to save later, right? Right. But the thought process of, hey, invest now, even if it's in small amounts, I didn't, as a child or a young adult, I didn't know right. really about investments other than savings. Right. Yeah. I did. I just... Nope. You just ignored it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I treated it like Ben's homework for yeah. creating five things. Just didn't do it. <laughs> just didn't do it. Yep. Hey, Ben, why don't you share half of your list? Hey, let's go for it, guys. So the young Ben, what I desperately needed was some relationship advice, and this is what I would tell my younger self. Um, say no to dateability and yes to personality development. Dateability means who do I need to become in order for so-and-so to like me? Personality development means who do I need to become in order to become the best self that I'm meant to be? And that will, that will send you on a different trajectory as far as relationships is concerned. Dateability is a false front. Um, it is dancing on a trap door of, uh, of lies. And so I would, I would have told my younger self, um, bro, you need to dive into to, um, becoming the man that the Lord means for you to become. Uh, and so that's that's probably something. Yeah, I like that, Ben, because everybody, you know, folks are lonely. They want to find the right spouse and they're trailing around looking for the right one. Uh, and I think if we were really just I mean, all we could be, we're just crushing it as men in every category You know, like you're working out and you're eating healthy and you're. Uh, you're earning and you're not a prick to everybody. You're going to church and you're giving, you do all this stuff. Uh, they're yeah. probably going to line up for you. Yeah. You know, so uh, that could be, but I think that's, that's a really good piece. I mm -hmm. think it's back to me now. Uh, here, uh, young John, listen, you're not going to like this, but holy cow, I'm right. After all, I just made you a fortune with Bitcoin, which you'd never even heard of. <laughs> so obviously I'm right here. Uh, my second thing is reading is a secret weapon. Mm. Uh, reading is a secret weapon. Beware wasting so much time. It stacks up. Uh, in mm. it, Later in college, young John, you're going to be tempted to watch like 20 seasons of Lost. And it ends up going this new age hippie kind of thing with time travel to wrap up all the missing pieces. And it totally doesn't, uh, doesn't satisfy. You're going to waste like two years following that stupid show. So don't do it. Read instead. Uh, but I find if you're reading learning, growing, you're going to pass up your peers at an alarming rate. You, you, you're going to just compound the amount of wisdom, the knowledge base that you have, your creative fires stoke on, up and holy cow, it will literally just catapult you into all kinds of success, regardless of what vocation you choose. Uh, all of your relationships could be healthier. Reading is a secret weapon and no one's doing it. So read, kid, read. What would you read first? What would you say? Okay, focus on this area, like these topics. I'm a sucker for Bible because it truly has changed my life like nothing ever has. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I'm going to say that. A lot of people have like, especially the non-spiritual crowd, like, okay, he has to say that. Uh, like I get a Christian punch card when I say it of like, a, no, like legit, I mean it. I mean it. Uh, and so there's that. But holy cow, I read very deeply and very broadly. Mm. So like everything from something helpful in my earlier years of... Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People to mm. Ben Hur and Historical Fiction with Stephen Pressfield. And uh, yeah, historical fiction is just it. But I, I've read all the, the main literature pieces that you would expect from, mm. you know, M Milton and Faust and Nietzsche and whoever, uh, folks I agree with and folks I don't agree with. I've read a great amount. And uh, so just read, avoid all the romance novels that I think Heath, what? Reads. I. Heath. I think it's Ben's turn to answer a question. Ben? I am a romance novel. <laughs> 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 All right, so somebody fire away here. Uh, let's see. You are responsible for your success and well being. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of times, especially when we're younger, we're waiting for our chance, you know, waiting for our chance to come up, our big opportunity. When, uh, you know, the universe is going to deliver something to us and it's our turn to hit it out of the park. 
But in reality, through hard work, through persistence, through those kind of things, you're going to be responsible for your success. That's great. It's not something that's just going to happen to you. And even if that opportunity does come and you're not prepared, you're not going to make the most of it. That's great. Hunt, kill, eat. Yep. It's yours for the taking. And if you do nothing, nothing's going to happen. Fortune favors the bold. Be careful because misfortune also favors the bold. So yeah, be smart. Mm-hmm. But I am... I am just exhausted by how many really smart people or really talented people, intelligence and talent are so overrated. And what is so underrated is persistence. It's like just hang in there and and grind it out. And it's the people that grind that that are overnight successes after 20 years of grind. They're sitting on top of this empire that they built or mm-hmm. they've done something amazing and like, whoa, overnight success. They're like, man, that dude's been grinding for decades. Mm-hmm. But uh, consistency, I absolutely like mm-hmm. yours. That's yep. fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to be kind of contrarian on that because my next one is going to be kind of, it kind of is going to rub up. It, it, it There's there's bits of that I agree with. And, but l- l- let me let me toss this out that it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, I think that it is not enough to simply be awesome at what you're doing. Uh, there's plenty of people who are phenomenal. They go nowhere with their hustle. And I think there's, there's the breakthrough typically will happen because of somebody they meet. Mm. And um, that opens the door. There's plenty of brilliant people you'll never hear about. They're working hard as they can, but they never get their break because it's not what you know, it's who you know. I think that hustle still matters. I think you um, grinding it out still matters, but you also have to be smart with relationships. It's not just enough to be awesome at what you do. You got to invest in relationships and network. Network helps you explode into wherever you want to go. So if you're distilling that into a point to young Benjamin, because you only got a moment, the the time clock is unwinding mm-hmm. and it's about to shoot you back into present day. You got to be okay with self-promotion. I think you got to be willing to promote yourself. Mm. And oh, I think that just takes... wait till Instagram, <clears throat> young Ben. It's all <laughs> yeah, right, pure yeah, right. vanity. Um, but uh, but there t- you need to have some confidence in what you're doing. If yeah. you're not confident in that, then you, then you don't want to promote yourself. That's good. So I think it's getting over that hump of, no, yeah, I do have something to offer. So promote it. It's okay. Go for it. That's good. All What's right, the worst cool. worst case scenario that they close the door? Be in your real face. intentional about networking and relationships and stuff. And, and yeah. I'd caution: don't just play the sycophant. People feel that as well. Of mm-hmm. like, oh, you're after me as a stepping stone. Of like, oh, you don't really care about me. You just yeah. want blah blah blah. And of like, a lot of people in those positions know that they can yeah. sense it. And you're like, oh, you're not after me. You're after what I have. And so not being a flatterer, but genuinely care about yeah. the high and the low. And, and that that takes, you know, that, that dog will hunt. I, I like that, Ben. That, that's a good one. It's probably time for a shameless plug, actually. You know, because Ben's out of material. We can do shameless plug. <laughs> so, yeah, we should probably. <laughs> I need time to write some. Get to work. Things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's open. I stole he the shameless plug. Get on the internet. Shameless plug. Shameless, shameless plug. plug. Guys, if you haven't seen our Raven target system, you got to check it out. It is one of the most easy ways to take a full target system out into the range because it's just got one cool carrying handle. It takes the entire system in one hand. You could have an entire another system in the other hand. You walk out to the range, set up as a cinch, and then there's no part. So like pins or hinges or a, a wooden sticks that get shot up and hold a bunch of toxic uh, lead that's going to cut your hands when you're playing with it. You can just leave them out in the elements and every once in a while you hit it with a fresh coat of spray paint. The angle on the target is fixed so it safely puts rounds in the dirt in this nice little trench that just screams up at you, see look how safe I am. It's like it's showing off. It's gonna save you far, far more money in the long term because you're not replacing a bunch of crap and all your steel that you're proud of in year one is just antique junk in year three. This is our shameless plug. Check out our Raven target system. It's the best thing out there. I think it's your turn. My third one is going to be, to be a leader means to walk alone. And that sucks, you know, uh, because uh, just the type of person I am, I like to gather a group of dudes and trust and empower. I have no problem uh, empowering others. And I I like the community of professionals shoulder to shoulder figuring stuff out. However, what I found is uh, I do need to trust my gut, my intuition. I was built to lead. I've been leading my whole life. And most of the time, I don't actually want to lead. Of like, I, I want things done well, and I'll jump in when things aren't going well. But most of the time, I don't want to lead. 
But uh, that is what I've been called to. Leadership means walking alone. Doesn't mean you can't have good friends or something, but you can't outsource those important decisions. You can't outsource vision. You're the leader. You have the vision. You're going to have to walk alone. So you, know, do it. you know what they say, John? They say, if everyone's happy, you ain't leading. Yeah, and woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so they did to the false prophets. If all you have is allies and people that think well of you, it means your life is not having an impact on anyone. You're not saying or doing or living any way of actual value to upset the wrath of other people or the jealousy or the anger. So if everyone really likes you a lot, it's because you're living a, a impactless res, uh, existence. Mm -hmm. It's not a good sign. Right. Yeah. So point of clarification, last week we talked about having a band of brothers. Yeah. You're saying that this is a unique thing in leadership is that sometimes you're going to have to walk alone, but you're not saying you're abandoning your community. No, great point of, no, of course you got your friends and you got your family and we're shoulder to shoulder doing stuff, but there's certain pieces of the leadership uh, calling that you can't outsource. It's you. It's just you alone. And that's going to upset people sometimes. Sometimes they're going to really like you for it. But typically, you're going to have to walk alone on a lot of stuff. No one else can pull that trigger for you. Your band of brothers can be a support for you. They can help you with wisdom, but they can't execute it. You have to execute. And they, in whatever sphere they're operating in, they have to execute as well. You don't hold their hand while they're trying to lead in their marriage uh, or amongst their kids or at their vocation or whatever they're called to. They're in a sphere and they've got to execute. So, Okay, my third is uh, problem solving is an underrated skill. Um, to be able to solve problems, to be able to look at something and take it from one place to another is so valuable because you can get, I mean, I've, I've had a number of jobs uh, or events or things that I've worked on where people have just paid me because either they had a problem they couldn't solve mm -hmm. or they didn't want to solve. And so as a young man, if you can harness this power yeah. and you can utilize it, I mean, you can make a career out of it. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, was it Elon Musk who said that you are compensated directly with the level of problems you're solving? I think I that it's like yeah. whatever the level of problems you can solve, that's your compensation level. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, problem solvers. And here on Warrior Poet Staff, we have no room for people that aren't self-starters and problem solvers. Because exactly. we're all too busy running an efficient ship here uh, that, that we can't be micromanaging. We don't have the time or energy to micromanage. So, oh, you got a problem? Great, figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. if you don't, we'll find someone else who wants to sit in that seat who will do your job. It'd be a, a good benefit to our culture as well. And they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so we get resumes every day. Yep. Um, and so, holy cow, of like, yep, anyway, be a problem solver. Cool. That's a good one. Yeah. Ben, <laughs> ben right, make guys, something no, up. I, no, I got a great one. <clears throat> um, young Ben uh, would have needed to hear this, and maybe you need to hear this too. You need to have fun. You need to have fun with uh, a community. And uh, fun gets maligned, but there is something really important about it. Because when you have fun, you create what is called a shared experience. And a shared experience is pretty important because do you want to know what a shared experience creates? It creates this thing called trust. And trust is important if you ever hope to roll back the layers of somebody's life. And all of that starts from having fun with a bunch of guys or a community. Uh, so the end result of, of having fun is, um, is shared experiences, which opens the door to trust so that you can actually start talking the deep talk and people will be willing to, to hear what you have to say. I bet that was good advice from older Ben to younger Ben. But if you had told young John at 20 to, mm -hmm. hey, kid, I want you to have a lot of fun. If I'm telling me, if yeah. I'm giving myself a free pass for fun, I had no problem having fun at 20. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, what I needed was more discipline. I need some guardrails. Mm. I need to be like, have fun and don't be a moron. Nope. You know, I needed <laughs> yeah. that chat. With some caveats. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what though? I'll tell you what, um, the other thing too is, um, I would, I would tell my younger self, um, to the best that you can try to love your parents a little bit more and uh, spend some time with them. Uh, my mom passed away when she was young. Oof. And so, you know, um, I think, uh, I think about, growing older, not having parents, my, my, my girl's not having grandparents. And so I, I think that 
um, I, I wish I would have appreciated how my mom was trying to reach out to me uh, as a teenager. And I, I pushed her off and away and um, I, I wish that I hadn't. And sorry. Thank you for that. Um, and I bet, you know, like in your case, your parents were good and you wish you had been around your mom more. Some people have kind of crappy parents and they don't yeah, want to be around yeah, sure. them. Maybe the answer for you is do it anyway, because once they're gone, you don't want that yeah. monkey on your back yeah. of regret and lack of forgiveness and man, have no unfinished business. And it's better to just suck it up, play nice for a couple hours during your visit. And then you don't have baggage for the rest of your life if something happens. So, sure. Yeah. 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 I think it's one of those things that you, I mean, you're not going to regret it uh, if you spend that extra time, you yeah. know, especially as you start getting older and you have kids of your own and you're like, you know, wanting to spend as much time as possible with them and be able to have, you know, all those memories on this side of it right. as a parent. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, all right, I got a third one. Oh, wait, I've done invest, reading, yeah. leader. So fourth one. Uh, I'm trying to hit different categories. Yeah, this yeah. one's going to be about body. Okay. Uh, hey, don't do max stuff and your body runs best on meat and fruit. Uh, so I crave candy mm -hmm. and uh, holy cow, candy's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but if I eat a whole bunch of fruit, I don't crave candy. I'm like, I could, that, what a hack. I was like 40 before I realized that. I just turned 40, by the way, so it's like I figured it out 30 seconds ago. Of like, man, my body really runs best on meat and fruit. And so, uh, but also, hey, working out more consistently over time. I've hurt myself so many times doing really heavy stuff mm -hmm. uh, for me. Uh, and then I'd have to sit out for a couple months, rehab that. And then I start feeling good. I overdo it. I get hurt again. And it's just been this cycle throughout my whole life. And what would have happened if I just slowed down my role a little bit and not chased all those maxes uh, over the decades and, and tried to lift a really, really heavy thing of like, hey, never do never do more than a, like a five rep max of like mm -hmm. you can do six reps or seven. Don't ever go for a one rep max. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's fool's gold. But in high school, you know, that that's that's the only thing there is mm -hmm. in a high school weight room. What's your bench press max? Yeah. And guess what? If you go to the gym, you're going to do a bench press max. And so, man, uh, just taking a little bit better care of my body would yeah. have been uh, good. And so that's what I'm after here. Well, and it's almost like the long-term care of like how your body's going to perform over the next 40, 50, 60 years right. instead of the sprint. I feel like I've hurt myself more times getting back into the gym. Right. Yeah. Whereas if I had just stayed consistent, those injuries wouldn't happen. That's what I'm saying. Yep. That's it. With you. That's it. I've got a fifth, uh, a final. Anybody else got one? Want to uh, jump see, in? My, so I've got, I had investments actually. So uh, that was one of my five, but we've covered yeah, that Yeah, John one. covered that. Sorry. Oh, you, he, no, he you didn't have it. that bit. You see what he's doing? No, John had that. He talked about investments earlier I already. I it was totally it. on Ben's yeah, list. Yeah, I crushed too, it. You got to sure. give us something else. Just... Yeah, no, my last one was actually uh, to have a general knowledge of more things. Uh, when I was growing up, especially when I was a young adult, I just assumed that I had to be an expert in certain things. And there were things that I just couldn't know about. Mm -hmm. And now as a older adult... You know, I can change my oil, I can work on my Jeep, I can do all these different things where before it was just like, oh, this is this black box of an area that I just don't know about. Get in there, same back, back to my first point, go mess something up, break something and fix it. That's cool. I wish I knew more about like building houses and yeah. contracting stuff, how to run electrical and a whole bunch of other stuff of like my mechanic skills are really low. We were doing the whole homesteading thing and farming thing, and I, I had no idea how to saddle a horse or how to take care of cows and chickens. And I just didn't know, I didn't know how to grow food and all the stuff that everyone's always known for all human history. We don't know because we highly specialize. What's your major? And then you go into that field and you're an accountant and you know accounting really well and not much of anything else. And, you know, if, if the world ever went, you know, tits up, and we need all those old <laughs> skills. Yeah. I mean, you're screwed. I'm like, what can you do? Right. <laughs> what, what do you offer? Well, well you, you can, can count the numbers as you die well, away. And I'm not ragging on accountants. I'm just, it was a placeholder for anyone that's highly specialized, but mm -hmm. without many actual skills outside of your area of speciality. And so to your point, being just more Renaissance man of like, you, you whatever the needs are, you can do it. You can fix it. Maybe not great because you're still specialized in this world. Mm -hmm. However, man, it'd be good to have some actual skills as a man. And this is a manly endeavor to do as well. I feel less manly when I have to hire out to do something simple, you sure. know? So, 
right now. Thank you, because y'all y'all have examples of how I've been less manly right now. You've all stayed quiet right Shut now. up. Right. Shut We're up. Just the shut up. Yeah. Everyone, shut up. <laughs> nope. Nope. Better. Very masculine. Look how low my voice just got. <laughs> John, changing the roll of toilet paper is actually pretty easy. I'm outsourcing that junk. I don't know... How yeah, rollers over, work. Over, under, which, yeah. Nope. Too uh -uh. many I've got a guy options. for that. Yeah. They come in. <laughs> I've got a TV They come guy. in every other day. Replace my uh, toilet paper rolls. <laughs> all right. Oh, did you bring five? What's your fifth one? My fifth one is uh, trust should be extremely slowly gained and quickly lost. Uh, of like, uh, I have just given out trust too quickly to people that really didn't earn it. I just wanted to trust them uh, and I liked them. So I trusted them. Uh, and that caused a lot of heartache, still causes heartache. Mm. So nope, don't do that one. Trust should be very slowly earned. It's not given by default. Uh, and, but it, it's, and, and that's like, you know, granting people special access to you or doing stuff together with folks. Be careful on that. Uh, slowly earned, quickly lost. I like that. Yeah. That's good advice. Mm-hmm. God, is it that you got another one? Because I think you hit four. Now I'm bubbling over. Oh yeah, now he's, he's been inspired. Now. Look, I would have said, I would have said to the young Benoit, for Pete's sake, quit following your dreams. But wherever you go, bring your dreams with you. Kind of like the old. That's a uh, Mike Rowe thing, you okay. know. And uh, I think that um, I spent a lot of my teenage years chasing the impractical mm. uh, that you couldn't build a life on. Um, and uh, it, trying to have trying to make the unicorn the thing, and right. uh, and I, I think that that um, what I would have I would have gained much from somebody uh, saying, "Hey man, no, your passions are great, your passions are great, and God's given you that, um, but that ain't gonna be your main hustle. You can't raise a family on that. Um, so how about you look into X, Y, Z? But you keep on, you know. I think there's a scripture in the Bible that says, you know, like. I'm going to butcher this, but, you know, work hard during the day, but at night, let not your hands be idle for you don't know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally as well. And so the thing is, I'd only been working on the stuff that would be, you know, at the night thing, but not really for a day job. So, yeah. That's good. I like that a lot because today we're so primed with follow your dreams and your passions that kids change careers or jobs through their 20s and 30s and 40s every two years. They've got a new job. And so they never sit still long enough to make any real economies of skill and get somewhere. I'm like, no, 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 get in a job industry anywhere. It doesn't really matter. A job's a job. Uh, you get in it and you grind it out and then you learn everything you uh, you can. And five, seven years in, you notice a, ne a niche. Uh, yeah. I would never know how to say that niche, niche. or it's a niche. niche. I think it's niche. You niche. can say either niche like quiche, but with a no. with an N. Yeah, niche. A no quiche. Uh, <laughs> a but you, you find that you know missing something, that opportunity, and then you can jump into that and exploit that. And maybe that becomes your side hustle. And entrepreneurially, you've got totally. this side hustle going on. And then one totally. day you're able to make that your main hustle. I'm in my you know early 40s, and Warrior Poet Society came out in like my mid 30s, but. I was jumping around, grinding all kinds of stuff out before I was able to make something that was a heartfelt passion into a main vocation. And most mm -hmm. folks are never able to do that, and they don't get to accomplish that dream. And I actually have all you viewers out there that are caught up in this movement that's greater than any one of us that means a ton, and you guys have allowed that to happen. And, and I believe in, in allowing me to be able to have this platform. You guys are benefiting as well. At least that's my true hope and my true prayer uh, but that that could have easily not happened. Yeah, uh, I mean, and and I and I think as a provider, I need to just grind it out. A job you get paid to do a job because you wouldn't have done it for free. <laughs> you know, like get yeah. paid. Uh, you know, I know there's the idea like, hey, find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I think that's horse crap. I, agree. I think that's utter horse crap. Totally. Um, you know, so I do not agree with that. I think that the, the more worthwhile the job is for you, I think the harder it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's not something you run away from, but you lean into. And, you know, um, what you were talking about earlier, John, all those years spent doing your thing, that's building this thing called character. Because what I've also found to be true, it's not so much the door you walk through as it is how you walk through the door that's of good. opportunity. Yep. C.S. Lewis says it's not, your, it's not the weight of a burden that crushes a person. Mm -hmm. It's actually how you carry it, you know? Ah. So it's like how it's precarious. Mm -hmm. 
It's mm. like a 50 pound pack, you know, well distributed yeah. or a bedroom mattress. Mm, that's good. Right. And the mattress may even weigh a little bit less, but it's kind of like, yeah. yeah. And then just, uh, so I, I think that there's wisdom in that, but a lot of folks just need to grind and plan their escape. Uh, but don't, don't think the grass is greener every two years. You're never going to get anywhere. Uh, and protector providers, that, that's, that's the main deal. And so anyway, I think having a decisive plan and working hard. Good. And looking mm-hmm. for opportunity. So, Ben, that was a great one. I'd like to end on uh, that's that all I got. one. That's yeah. all I got. And that's good. so we need to go on to the race. We've got Q and Ambush. We've got yep. our training tip. We've got dad jokes. Yeah, I definitely yeah. want to get to Q and Ambush because you already told me about uh, we've, them. We've got some good ones. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. But no. we need to say goodbye to YouTube and those listening on podcasts. Correct. Because and... you got to go to watchwpsn.com if you would like to see the rest of this episode, all of our other episodes. We also have all kinds of different shows that will blow your mind that we have done such entertaining things for you. And also training classes. So good. Long range, knife fighting, pistol classes, rifle classes. One pistol class is worth the, what? Oh, it's worth a subscription. hundred bucks yep. a year. Uh, and it's not even a hundred bucks right now because if you sh- if you sign up using code JL Show, you get it for seventy nine ninety nine for the first year. Come on, come on, and that's not going to last forever, right? We're going to nope. take the code away. Yep. We talked about that. Yeah, sorry. So do it now. Rush the door. We actually well, appreciate you. Need your support. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to rattle off a few uh, things that you would tell your twenty year old self down below, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. See you.